So I'm just out taking my dog for a walk. Thought I'd bring you along before I get back to the house, get stuck into my next video. So this is my dog Ripley. She's a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. She's completely bonkers, but she's fantastic around the kids. It's a really nice day out here, actually. It seems such a shame to be cooped up in the house, but at least I can use dog walking as an excuse to get out. Look at my T-shirt. It's amazing. What is it? It's a, a Korean fried peas you got. Super cool. Look at my t-shirt. Yours is also really it's cool. It's a flipper. Hello. Hope you enjoyed my little intro there. Sorry about the coffee making montage. I know it's been done to death on YouTube, but I've always wanted to make one. Speaking of which. In this series, we're going to be looking at how to make a website. But before we can do that, we first need to ask ourselves, what exactly is a website? Well, let's have a look at YouTube. So what have we got? Text, images, video. There's some other stuff happening as well. I can see a search box, some links that you can click on. But let's have a look behind the scenes. I'm going to right click on the page and go to inspect. Now what we're looking at here is the code that actually lies behind the website. If I move my mouse over different parts of the code, you can see different parts of the website highlighting. Now I don't want you to worry about what all this code means right now. I just want you to have an understanding that actually everything you see on a website comes from this code. You can even edit the code in the inspector. Sometimes I see my students doing this. If I right click on here where it says 112 subscribers and go to that exact part of the code, I can double click this and I can change the value. So instead of 112, maybe I change it to 5 million. Wow, 5 million subscribers. But what you need to understand is that the change that I just made to that website is only visible to me, right here, right now. As soon as I refresh the page, that change will go and it will reload the original website. So what's the point of the inspector? Well, actually it's used by developers all the time. It's a really convenient way to make quick changes to a website to see how it looks. Now there's a name for the code that we just saw. It's called HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. Now when you type youtube.com into the address bar in your browser, what actually happens? Well, your computer sends off a request to YouTube saying, can I have the website please? YouTube responds by sending HTML. It sends your browser all of that code. Your browser looks at that code and renders it or turns it into the website that you see. Now there's a lot more that we need to understand about how websites work. How do you even get one onto the internet, for example? And we're gonna learn all about that later in the series. Today, I want to focus on just learning the very basics of HTML. So let's get on with it. We're gonna start by making a simple website like this. As you can see, we have a header with a background color and an image in it. We also have a footer with a dark background. In the main section, we have a large heading, an embedded YouTube video, there's a short paragraph of text, and then a hyperlink. Now obviously I've used my channel for this, but I seriously doubt that this will be your favorite video, so please feel free to use any video and channel that you like. But the website that I'm actually using to do my coding here is called CodePen. Now you wouldn't actually use CodePen to make an entire website. CodePen is more of a playground where you can experiment with web coding ideas. Now when you're done with this tutorial, I definitely recommend having a look at some of the pens that other people have made because there's some really clever stuff on there. So when you open CodePen, the first thing you should do is sign up for an account so that you can save your pens. This also means that you'll be able to share what you've made. So just click the sign up button. You can either use an existing account to sign up or click sign up with email, pop in your email address, choose a username and you're done. 
So once you've signed up, go ahead and click the new pen button. The first thing I want to do is change the default horizontal view to a vertical view like this. I'm also going to collapse this JavaScript section. Now let's talk about the two boxes that we've got left. So HTML, that stands for Hypertext Markup Language. This is where you put the actual content for your web page. This includes obvious stuff like text and hyperlinks, images, videos, but also the boxes that you use to divide the page into different layouts, headers, footers, that sort of thing. The second box is where we type CSS. Now CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. Now don't worry about that cascading bit, but I think the style bit speaks for itself. CSS allows us to make the page look the way we want it to. So we use CSS to control the layout of elements on the page. You can also change the dimensions of things, heights and widths of images, for example. And this is where you would choose things like fonts, colors, shadows, borders. So yeah, technically we're going to be learning two languages here. So job number one is to head up here where it says Untitled and give this web page a name. Let's start coding our first bit of HTML. So I'm creating here a header tag. Now most tags in HTML have an opening part that looks like that, followed by a closing part, which is the same, but it has a forward slash inside. So this is the opening part of my tag, and this is the closing part of my tag. And anything that I put in between those two tags will be content that goes inside my header. My second tag is going to be a main tag. And again, this needs to have a closing part to it. And then finally, a footer tag. At the moment, you can't actually see anything over here in the web page. And that's because although I've created the header, main and footer, there's nothing in them. So let's go ahead and give these three elements some properties that will allow us to actually see them. So that's where CSS comes in. So I'm going to go down here into my CSS. Now, if I want to style the header on my page, I type the word header, followed by a space, and then I have to do a brace. So you'll find that next to the P key on the keyboard. Hold shift and tap the key and you'll get a brace. And if I now press return, you'll see that I'm in between the two braces. So that brace opens the style and that brace closes the style. And inside, I now get to type any style that I want to be applied to the header. So to begin with, I'm going to type height 100 pixels. Now you have to end each property in your CSS with a semicolon. That's a bit like a full stop for CSS. That way it doesn't get confused with the style that you put on the next line. For the next one, I'm going to put background Note that colon space, that's very important. And in here, I get to type in a color. I can just type a color like pink. And there you go. You can now see that that header with a height of 100 pixels background pink has appeared. So when it comes to choosing colors, there are different ways to do this. There is actually a list of web safe colors that you can type in. You'll probably find that most of the common colors that you're used to will work. And there's also some more unusual ones that will work. But if you want to be really specific about the color that you choose, it's a good idea to actually get a hex code. So if you head over to Google and search for color picker, it gives you this handy tool that you can use to get the codes for any color that you need. All I have to do is drag the slider this way to find the color that I want, and then drag the circle around to choose the tone of the color that I want. So if I want to go for quite a soft green color, like in my example, then I might choose something around this area. Obviously this is more saturated, this is less saturated. It's a good idea not to go for big vibrant colors. They don't tend to look very good on websites. These softer muted colors tend to work better. So I'm gonna go for around there. And it's this code right here that I'm interested in. So I'm going to highlight that and copy it, or use your keyboard shortcut, Control C on Windows, Command C on a Mac. So we'll copy that, head back to our page, and simply paste it in. So now let's style the main section. Now I want my main section to have a height 
of 600 pixels. Now again, I can't see it just yet, so let's go ahead and give it a background. I don't actually want a background color for this main, but I do need to be able to see it right now. So I usually go for pink. It's a color that I don't often use on websites. It makes things stand out. And then finally, footer. And I will give this a height of 200 pixels and a background. I want this to be quite a dark gray, almost black. Let's go to our color picker again. If I want shades of gray, that's going to be all the way over here, completely desaturated and not completely black, but just slightly off. Let's go for that one. Copy and paste. And when I scroll down, there you go. Now, can you see this white margin that's going around my page at the moment? I really don't want that to be there. Now, what we're looking at here is actually the browser putting a bit of CSS onto the web page for us. Browsers do this by default, but we can override it. We can get rid of this annoying margin that's there. I'm going to add a bit of space before my header style and I'm going to style an element called body. Now I know that we haven't got a body tag up here, but on an actual website, the body tag is the tag that encompasses everything. So although we can't see it up here, technically there is a body tag there and a closing body tag there. And all of this is actually inside those two body tags. But in CodePen, you don't need to put those body tags. They're already kind of there, hidden in the background. But even though we can't see those body tags, we can still style them. Now, what we want to do is just say margin zero. That's just gonna switch off that margin. We're not gonna do anything else with that body just yet. Just wanted to touch on that because that allows us to get rid of that annoying white border. So now you can see we've got our header, our main and the footer. At this stage, I'm actually going to get rid of that background pink. I don't want that. I'm going to change that to background white. So let's go ahead and put an image into the header. So I'm going to head over to the header in between the opening and closing tags. Hit return. Now I'm inside the header. And to create an image, we use the image tag. Now the image tag doesn't have a closing part like that. Image tags just have the opening part. Now on its own, of course, that image tag does absolutely nothing. The image tag needs to be told where to find the image that you want it to show. So we do that by going inside the tag space and we're going to add an attribute to the HTML tag. In this case, it's the source attribute, SRC. It's the word source with the vowels removed, equals and then there are two quotes. Notice how CodePen added the second quote for me and put me inside the two quotes. Now in here, I have to paste in the web address for the image that I want to show on my website. So open up a new tab and do a Google image search for whatever icon you'd like to put on your web page. I'm using the YouTube icon. I'm going to click transparent background as well. And I'm going to try and find one of these that does actually have a transparent background. Little tip here, if you can see a checkered pattern on these little search result previews, then don't use it. You want to look for any image that doesn't have that. Um, and when you click on it, if it then comes up with a checkered pattern, you know you've actually got an image with a transparent background. So what you need to do is right click that image and choose the option copy image address. Then head back to your web page and paste it in. And when it first appears, it's likely going to be quite large. The reason for this is that it's a very large image and it is spilling out of the header. It's just showing up on the screen at actual size. That's how big the image is. What we need to do is use our CSS to style the image to make it the height that we want. So I'm going to go into my CSS. I could put this new style right at the bottom, but it makes more sense to put this CSS for the image around the same place as the header because that's where it is in the HTML. So I'm going to go after the header. Brand new style now, styling the image tag. 
And what I'm going to do is give it a height of 100 pixels to match the header. Now that looks okay. It would look a little bit neater, I think, if there was a bit of a gap around it. So we can fix this problem by giving it a smaller height. So instead of 100 pixels, let's go for 80 pixels. And now if I can put a margin on the top and left to bring it down and across, it will look a lot neater. So I'm going to type in margin top. So this kind of puts a bit of a gap above the image and I'm going to put 10 pixels. So that brings it down. Now I'm going to use margin left to do the same thing on the left. Now that looks a lot neater. So now let's have a look at the main section. Right now it's completely empty. Let's go ahead and put in our heading. So in HTML there are seven heading tags that you can use and they go from largest which is the h1 tag to the smallest which is the h7 tag. So if I go inside here and type in a heading it will appear on the screen saying largest. If I did the same thing using the h7 tag this will be the smallest. And of course h2, h3, h4 will be in between. So I want an h1 tag for this and in here I'm going to type in the heading for my video which is my favorite video. So I should probably pay attention to this yellow banner it's telling me that I've done a lot of work and I haven't saved so let's do that now. Okay so let's carry on that's my heading tag done. Now underneath that heading tag I want to insert a YouTube video. Now this is actually really really easy to do. So head over to YouTube, find the video that you want to embed onto your web page, click the share button, look for the embed option and what we're looking at here is HTML. So we need to copy all of that code. In fact there's a button here that will copy it for you. So now we can head back to our web page and we can simply paste that code in. And there you go. You can see that we've now got a heading and a video. Let's go underneath that and add in our paragraph. So after the iframe, but still inside the open and closing main tags, I'm now going to put a paragraph tag. What I want you to type here is the reason why you love this video. So I'm going to put, I love this video because it's made by the best teacher in the world. And there you go, the paragraph is now underneath your video. Now the last thing that I want to do is to put a hyperlink underneath this that you can click on to go to the channel. Now hyperlinks are created using anchor tags. Anchor tags look like this. It's an A. Now in between the opening and closing anchor tags, this is where you type the text that you want to appear on the screen. The text that the user will see and click on. So I'm going to put click here to visit the channel. But at the moment the hyperlink doesn't actually know where to go when the user clicks on it. To do that we have to go inside the opening anchor tag and type in an href attribute. Now href stands for hypertext reference, or in other words, URL or web address. I need the web address of the channel pasted in here. So let's head back to my YouTube channel. I can get the channel address very simply by right clicking on the channel name here and going to copy link address. So now I can head back to the web page, paste that in, and now this is actually a clickable link. However, when I try to click on this link, it's going to try and open up my YouTube channel inside CodePen, inside this window here, and it's not going to work. What we need to do instead is to tell this link it should open the new web page in a separate tab. We can do that by going back up into our anchor tag. After the href attribute, we're going to add another attribute which is called the target attribute. And if we type in underscore blank, that means open in a new tab. So now I can head down here, click on this 
and it opens up a brand new tab and goes straight to my channel. So at this point we're nearly finished, but there are just a couple of things that I want to do to improve the look of this. Now the first thing that I want to do is just move all of this content inside the main section across a little bit in the same way that we did with the image. When you add space around things, it makes it much more comfortable to look at, it makes it more accessible. Things just look better when you allow space around them. So to do this, I'm going to use a property called padding. Now we've already learned about margin, which puts space around the outside of things. Padding is a way of putting space on the inside of something. So if I can go to my main section and apply some padding, it's going to push everything in inside the main section. Padding. And I'm going to put 10 pixels, which was the same as the image. So it's a small change, but it really helps to make the web page look better. The next thing I want to do to improve this web page is to change the font. Now at the moment, if I right click on my heading and go to inspect to have a look at the code behind the web page, we can see that right now this web page is using Times New Roman. That's the default font for a web page if you don't specify your own font in the CSS. So what I'm going to do is head back over to my CSS and style the H1 to have the font that I want it to have. So the H1 is inside main, so I'm going to go after main. That would be a suitable place to put it. H1, to style the H1 tag, and the property that we want is called font family. Now I could talk a lot here about how fonts work on web pages. There are some fonts that will always work, some fonts that will only work if the user has them installed or if you link to it yourself in your web code. And now I'm just going to choose a font that I know is installed on most computers and also looks good, which is Helvetica. So now you can see that the heading tag has Helvetica font, but the paragraph and the anchor tag are still using Times New Roman. So I could now create a style for my anchor tag and my paragraph tag as well, and put this same font family Helvetica style onto them. But actually it makes more sense to do this. I'm gonna highlight that and just cut it. Or I've copied it as well. Cut means copy and delete at the same time. And I'm gonna head back up to the body tag. Now remember when I showed you earlier, my header, main and footer are actually all inside this hidden body tag. If I put this style onto the body tag, it will affect everything inside it. So there you go. Now you can see that all of the text on my web page has changed to font family Helvetica. So now that I've got the font that I want, I want to change the font weight. Now this means how kind of big and bold the text is. If we look at the heading tag, we can see that the font is quite chunky. So to change this, I'm going to go ahead and create a style for my H1, which is going to be font weight. Now font weights come in hundreds from 100 up to 800. And depending on what fonts are installed, there are some that you can use and some that you can't. I know it's complicated, but I'm going to use 200 for this. And if you look at the heading, you'll see that now it looks much thinner. Okay, so onto the final thing that I want to do with this web page, which is to change the anchor tag. So anchor tags by default are blue when they haven't been clicked on, purple when they have been clicked on, and they come with an underline. Now the reason for that is so that it clearly shows to the user of the web page that this is a clickable link. But you can override that style using CSS. So I'm going to go into my CSS after my H1, create a style for the anchor tag. Now the first thing I'm going to do is remove that underline using a property called text decoration. And the value that I want is simply none. The next thing I'm going to do is to set the color. Now I'd like this to be a kind of light gray color. So the property we use is color, not font hyphen color, just color and it's the American spelling. If I head over to the color picker that we used earlier, I'm going to go for kind of gray color, that will do. I need to copy that code back to the web page and paste it in. And the final thing I want to do is to set the font weight to make it look heavier than the paragraph. 
font weight, and I'll go for about 600. And that is our finished web page. So there you go, that's your first web coding project complete. If you enjoyed this video, drop a comment down below and I'll see you in the next one.